In this lesson, you will learn how to find rates of change and slopes, and to relate a constant rate of change to the slope of a line. Your I can statements. And you write a vocab. So a rate of change is a ratio that compares the amount of change in a dependent variable to the amount of change in an independent variable. So that can be written as a fraction, of course, as ratios can, uh, where the dependent variable is in the numerator and the independent variable is in the denominator. So it's going to be important that we first identify the independent and dependent variables in a relation. So in the table below shows the average temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for five months in a certain city. Find the rate of change for each time period. During which time period did the temperature increase at the fastest rate? So we're going to find the rate of, time, uh, the rate of change between uh, the second month and the third month, and the third month and the fifth month, and fifth and seventh and seventh and eighth. Now notice that the, the change in time, which can be found by subtracting okay, three minus two, one month elapses between these two intervals. Um, it varies in this case. From here it goes, it's one month jump. Here it's a two month jump, and then another two, and then just another one. All right now, temperature more expectedly uh, is going to vary um, from month to month as well. Actually, from the second month to the third month, it doesn't vary at all. Actually, there's no change at all. From the third to the fifth, over those course over those two months, it changed from 56 to 63, and then from five to seven, changed from 63 to 71, and seven to eight, it changed from 71 to 72. All right, so let's find, um, first identify that independent and dependent variable. Now, of course, most times when the when time is involved, that's going to be the independent variable, and it is here, and that makes the dependent variable the temperature. So the temperature depends upon the month. So from the second month to the third month, we take the change of temperature, the dependent variable, it changed from 56 to 56, which is zero change over a change of one month. So that has a zero degree Fahrenheit over one month uh, rate of change. Now from three to five, it changed from 56 degrees to 63 degrees, which is a positive seven degree change over the course of two months, which can be found by subtracting five minus three. Average that, that gives us 3.5 or three and a half degrees Fahrenheit per month. From five to seven, once again, that's over two months. Change from 63 to 71, that's eight degrees. Over two months is an average of four degrees per month. And lastly, from seven to eight, we get a grand total of one degree per month. So the temperature increased at the greatest rate from month five to seven in this interval here. It increased by four degrees per month. So we had a lot of variation uh, in, this, um, in this table of data. Um, from no change at all to four degrees down to one and three and a half degrees. Okay, so now we could graph that rate of change, of course, by uh, graphing them as ordered pairs. Now notice the, ver the vertical segments show the changes in the dependent variable, and the horizontal segments show the change in the independent variable. So in the second month, where it was uh, 56 degrees to go to the next month, the third month. Remember, it did not change at all, so there's no change in the, the temperature here. And this is the fifth month, changed substantially, and then the sixth, or rather the, the next interval, and find the last interval. So we can plot those points as ordered pairs, and we see that the, the change uh, corresponds with our information that we found on the previous slide. Once again, notice that the greatest rate of change is presented, represented by the steepest of the red line segments. And that happened to be the interval that we identified through our calculation. It went up 8 over 2 for an average of 4 degrees per month. Also notice that between the months uh, two and three, when the balance did not change, the line segment is horizontal. This indicates a no change in the temperature. 
All right, now you guys try. The table below shows the balance of a bank account on different days of the month. Find the rate of change during each time interval. During which time interval did the balance decrease at the greatest rate? Pause video now. All right, so welcome back. We have a first and foremost, hopefully you identified the independent and dependent variable. In this case, uh, the independent variable is the day and the dependent variable is the balance. So now we need to find the change, uh, the rates of change from one to six. Uh, that's a change of five days and a change of 285 to 550. So we actually have a decrease in the, ba the balance, which gave us negative 265 over five, which is negative uh, $53 per day. Not good. From 10 to 6, uh, 10, I'm sorry, 6 to 16, rather, that's a change of 10 days. Over those 10 days, the balance went from 285 to 210, further de uh, decreasing, which is a negative 75 over 10, which is negative 7.5 average uh, dollars per day. 16 to 22, actually had no change. It went from 210 to 210 over the course of six days. And then from 22 to 30, that well, over eight days changed negative $35, which was just negative $4.375 per day. So the balance declined at the greatest rate from day one to day six early on, $53 per day. Then it seemed to slow down a little bit, actually stopped changing for a little while, and then picked up a little bit more. Now, if we were to graph that information, it would look something like this. Um, at the earliest, we had the greatest amount of money in, the, in our bank balance. Uh, and we, we recognize that first interval was when the greatest change occurred. And that's got the steepest line, notice. And then it seems to uh, flatten out somewhat. And then it flattens out completely here at this plateau we call. And then, it, then it's descended once more here. But do notice the greatest rate of change occurred here and that could be identified visually with a steep steep line. Also notice between 16 and 8, uh, I'm sorry, 16 and 22 when the balance did not change uh, the line segment is horizontal oops, which we we mentioned. So if all the connected segments have the same rate of change that means we did our, our, our computations and they all came up with the same rate of change, then they have all the same steepness and together form a straight line. The constant rate of change of a, of a line is called the slope of that line. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about slope and you'll spend a lot of time over the next couple of years of your algebra life talking about slope. So what is slope? Well, slope, uh, we have some terms we're going to reference. Uh, when we talk about rise, uh, that's the difference in the y values of two points on a line. Um, we talk about run, that's the difference in the x values of two points on the line. And then slope, of course, is just the ratio of the rise to the run for any two points on the line. So we'll express slope as uh, slope, of course, and it equals rise over run. And we'll also describe it as the change of y's or change in y's over the change in x's. And we'll even describe slope as m, the, the variable n, m rather. Remember that the y is the dependent variable and the x is the independent variable. So y's are already on top. You're going to go up and down. That's going to be in the numerator. And then side to side is your denominator. So in this case, this line, we go up one, two, three units, and we run two units. Rise one, two, three, run two. Rise one, two, three, run two. So this has a slope of three over two. So find the slope of the line given. Well, uh, I'm going to identify probably two points that are on the, the grid lines. Uh, in this case, we've got three, two, and we've got negative six, positive five. Now I'm going to begin at one point and just count vertically to find the rise. Now it really doesn't matter which point I begin at. I'm going to start at 3, 2, and I go up and I find the rise is 1, 2, 3 units. Then I'm going to count horizontally to find uh, to the second point to find the run. So now notice I went to the left. Since I'm going to the left in the horizontal 
run direction, that's going to be a negative run. It does not matter which point you start with, the slope is going to be the same either way. For instance, if I had started at negative 6, 5, I would have gone down negative 3 and then run positive 9. Still give me a value of negative 3 over, one, over 9, which is negative 1 third. All right, take a look at another example. Uh, I'm going to go uh, from this point, um, 5, negative 5. I'm going to rise 2, and then I'm going to run negative 5. So this has a slope of 2 over negative 5, or um, negative 2 over 5. Now I can write this as uh, negative 2 over 5, or I could bring that negative sign out front of the fraction and say the slope here is negative 2 fifths. It doesn't matter which point you start with, the slope's the same, we know that. I could have gone from, the, from left to right and gone down 2 and then over 5 still would have given me negative 2 fifths. Okay, two more examples. Um, now this first example, a little tricky because the rise to go from here to here is 6 but there's no run. I don't do any run so that's going to have a 0 run. Now this is actually what we call undefined or you cannot divide by 0 so it's undefined um, or uh, has no slope. Now that's different from this horizontal line which does have a run but it doesn't have a rise in which case you have a 0 in the numerator. Now that's okay. That's called a 0 slope. So take a moment to find the slope of these two lines. Should be pretty easy, right? Okay, welcome back. Hopefully if you saw a vertical line, you know immediately vertical line is no slope. Think about if you were to, if uh, these lines were uh, ski slopes. Uh, you could not ski straight up that line. So that's no slope or impossible or in, uh, in undefined. Likewise, it would take zero effort to, to really ski on uh, this flat this flat uh, this flat line it would go you would have zero speed really so you have zero slope on a flat horizontal line so as shown in the previous example slope can be positive negative zero or undefined you can tell which of these and this uh, is the case by looking at the graph of a line you do not need to calculate the slope just by looking at it you can tell if it rises from left to right it's going to be positive it's like going uphill uh, it's going negative, it's going from left to right, going downhill, and zero slope is that horizontal line, and then vertical slope is that undefined line. So tell whether these, positive, negative, undefined, or zero. Uh, obviously this one's going up from left to right, so it's going uphill. Um, that would be a positive slope. And the, the one on the right is going downhill. That's going to be a negative slope from left to right. So now you guys give it a try. Positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Pause your video now. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you recognize that first one is a vertical line, so that's going to have an undefined slope. And that second one, B, is going uphill from left to right, so that's going to have a positive slope. How'd you do? All right, guys, so when comparing slopes, notice that um, when we're comparing slopes, the, uh, the slope obviously does matter. The slope, slope record of represents the steepness of the line. So even if it's negative, it can have a greater steepness than a positive slope. So we, we compare using the absolute value of the slope. So this line with a slope of four is greater than this line with a slope of one half, obviously. Now this one has a slope of negative two and that has a greater slope or a greater steepness, I should say, than the slope of negative one because that's a greater absolute value. Um, this one has a positive slope of three-fourths, but the negative one has a greater steepness because it has a greater absolute value. In this lesson, you learn how to find rates of change and slopes and to relate a constant rate of change and the slope of a line.